In the undeveloped landscape of the Columbia River Valley, glacial features are easy to see. The evidence for ice ages in this area here are numerous. Here we are in the midst of a whole set of, of very large boulders. These are big blocks of basalt. They were quarried by the glaciers that came through this area. Known as erratics because of their uncommon appearance, these boulders mark the leading edge, or terminal moraine, of the ice sheet's glaciers. Glacial moraines are usually difficult to see, but a telltale sign of the glacier are the glacial erratics. When you think, when you view these from the, the deer and you realize that there are thousands that, that dot the landscape, you realize how powerful the glacier is in modifying the landscape. Monuments to that power exist all over the world, even in New York's Central Park, where human endeavor dwarfs glacial remains. These boulders were dragged from Canada all the way to New York, a distance of several hundred miles. Echoes of the last ice age sound throughout the landscape of North America. Another very popular place is Yosemite Valley, in the high country in Yosemite, that shows all kinds of signs of, of glacial action, and especially Yosemite Valley proper is one of these very steep-sided, flat-bottom valleys that's typical of glacial country. More subtle remnants of glacial action, called eskers, twist and turn throughout the Columbia River Valley. An esker is, is an intriguing, sinuous ridge of gravel that was formed in a tunnel under the ice. And in this case, the water was, was confined by walls of ice. And as it ran under the ice, it carried sediment. And now the sediments are left behind to form the ridge. Each spring, apple blossoms pay their respects to the most valuable glacial gift to Columbia Valley, the soil itself. Made from ground bedrock and clay, the fertile soil provides farmers with an excellent proving ground. Dodging erratics, farmers harvest the rewards of an ancient glacier's activity. Today, living glaciers continue to shape the world as we know it. One third of the world's mountain glaciers are found in Alaska. Glaciers like the mighty Columbia, edging into Prince William Sound. But what gives these giants life, and how are they compelled to move? Born in high alpine regions, glaciers begin as snowfields built up and weighed down by annual snowfall. Over time, the compressed ice mass creates its own momentum and begins its unyielding slide, bulldozing a wall of crushed bedrock and debris. The rocky front edge of a glacier is known as a terminal moraine. When glaciers like the Columbia push into the sea, they are called tidewater glaciers. Their moraines and much of their icy faces are often submerged. Terminal moraines acting like face masks can protect the front of a glacier from being ravaged by the elements, even water. But when much of the glacier's face is exposed and underwater, huge chunks of ice break loose in a process called calving. As icebergs break off the face, the glacier abandons its moraine. Columbia Glacier has been rushing backwards since the early 1970s. Finding itself in deep water with its face completely exposed, Columbia began what scientists call a drastic retreat, calving up to 15 million tons of ice a day into Prince William Sound. Dr. Larry Mayo of the United States Geological Survey wants to know why. We've been studying Columbia Glacier since about 1973 in order to find out why tidewater glaciers all of a sudden retreat very rapidly. Understanding the mechanics of a mammoth glacier with 1,000 feet of its face underwater isn't easy. Boats can't navigate the iceberg soup filling the bowl between the glacier's face and the submerged moraine. Dwarfed by his subject, Mayo explores the glacier's vast front with a pathometer to measure water depth in an attempt to analyze Columbia's behavior. Even when a glacier races backwards, its movement can't be seen by the naked eye. In order to record Columbia's retreat, the United States Geological Survey put a time-lapse camera to work for five years. The glacier is still advancing. 
But for every step forward, it takes two giant steps back and will continue to do so, Mayo believes, as long as its face sits in deep water.